All right, the watch list for April 27th, 2015. I'm going to start with uh, s uh, several bounce plays here. Um, and these are all entered only with a proper intraday setup. In other words, there's no trigger price I'm looking at right now. Um, I just think they might be overdone to the downside. And if they give me an intraday setup, um, I'll make a long trade in them. All right. Um, I'm in cash every night. So these are just setups. I'm looking for trades on Monday. All right. Having said all that, CAB gapped up on Thursday, sold off, sold off all day on Friday as well. Almost at a gap fill here. Um, so looking for a potential bounce higher on Monday. That's CAB, Cabela's, Facebook, FB. Um, I guess they had earnings, what, on Thursday? It ripped at the open and then sold off and then again sold off um, on Friday. So two days of selling nearing this 81 support. It's had an 81 area, not exactly 81, but it had nice support here, here, here. And after uh, two days of selling, maybe we get a gap down. This is an area I definitely want to watch, that 81 area for Facebook. VLTC, never got a trade in this one on uh, on Friday, but it just goes back on bounce watch. Again, I wouldn't be surprised to see this all the way back down here in a month or so, but with this kind of crazy move, and now you're looking at, let's go to 15 minute candles. Um, see, it put in, okay, there, this was the kind of the blow off top on Wednesday. Then Thursday, um, it put in its early high in the first, you know, right about the first half hour and the same thing on Friday. What I really want to see is, yeah, again, a sideways action for a while. I'd like to see an afternoon high of day break out of a range, and that could give a really quick pop. So um, being a day trader, I have the luxury of just having it on a chart, and I don't do anything with it unless it meets my parameters. But this one of these days, I think, could give a really nice afternoon breakout to the upside just for a trade. All right, ANY, uh, really nice move on Thursday. Uh, on Friday, kind of gapped up a little, which took some of the wind out of any idea for a trade and then sold off. Um, is it ready for a bounce on Monday? I don't know. I mean, it may have another red day in it. Um, so right now it goes on watch, but not my favorite going into Monday, but you never know. It might give a nice trade. Um, GBSN has been a great trader in the chat room. Um, gapped up on Wednesday and really ripped. We had a really nice trade in it, but then it gave back most of its gains. Same thing on uh, Thursday. I had a really nice uh, open and then closed at its lows. And then Friday, get, you know, I guess looks like maybe, let's look at the five minute chart here. Yeah, it ran from the open, but again, notice it put in its high early and then tailed off the rest of the day. You see that a lot. Um, now we're down to the eight day. I mean, getting somewhat close to a gap fill. This one is such a nice mover lately. Um, great volume recently. Um, maybe it's come in enough now to start watching for a bounce. That's GBSN. Broadcom, BRCM, gapped up on Wednesday and um, held up fairly well on Wednesday, but then Thursday and Friday sold off. You're basically at a gap fill. You're at the 20-day. Broadcom goes on bounce watch too. PCAR um, gapped up on Tuesday. It looks like it sold off initially, then closed at its highs. Um, fairly strong again on Wednesday and then closed about flat. Now you're two days lower on declining volume. This one may have another red day in it, but um, it, it's time to start watching this one for a bounce. This was really nice volume on uh, on Tuesday, and it's holding up okay. So um, that's a good candidate for a you know a second move higher now, in my opinion. Um, B I O C still in the um, bounce play category here. Uh, very strong move here, but then you had the gap up, and now it's just been selling ever since for really about three four days straight. Um, some buyers finally came in, it looks like, with that tail there um, Friday morning. And it, it, it didn't do much of anything after that. I never had a trade in it or anything, but it's time to start watching this one for a, another push higher too. Um, BIOC really moves nicely at times. IBIO, um, really, really handsome chart here. Let's get this thing off. That's an old trend line. Let's draw a new one. So I've got my mouse set super fast because I've got six monitors and I want to be able to kind of be able to, with a flick of a wrist, get across all of my screen real estate, if you will. So um, when I have to do the delicate things, sometimes it can make me look like I don't know how to control a mouse. All right, anyway, IBIO, nice volume back here. And it ran up to, let's see what the high was, um, $1.32. Put in a lower high here at $1.12. Um, it had a lower high here at $1.07. I had this on watch on Friday, um, if you saw my video. Well, it got through that uh, $1.08 and it hit $1.10. 
um, closed at a dollar six point nine. However, it does that. So, um, my catalysts now for this one are a dollar eleven, one point one one, and one point one three. So, a dollar at eleven is a break of Friday's high. One thirteen takes out uh, the high from a couple weeks ago, and then maybe you move to and even possibly through this dollar thirty two. This is a really nice setup. Um, so this one's coiled. So that's you know that's why I'll be looking for an entry at a dollar eleven for a day trade and hoping we take out that dollar thirteen and maybe come up and visit that. I mean that's a good percentage move, uh, even if you just retest this one thirty two and it's possible to break through it. So um, look at the move it made back here. I mean crazy went all the way to three forty. So this is a great great chart setup and IBIO will have my attention on Monday. FTK I talked about a possible bounce in this thing on uh, on Friday. I never did take a trade in it myself. I was busy looking at other things, but it did go down through 14 and then ended up closing back above it um, after five or six or seven red days, whatever that is. Um, nice volume lately. So maybe um, it's higher from here. Maybe that was a little stop run and maybe it's higher from here. It's not my favorite. Um, won't be like my, my top stock to watch, but uh, I will have it on a chart. ATHM, a lot of shorts in this name. Um, it broke out of a long trend line right right back here. I had it on watch and it's just been chopping around. Whoops, chopping around ever since. But nice volume on Friday. Um, and it's near this high. I should probably put a line there. That was um, 53.56. 53.56. And uh, maybe over that, uh, it comes up and tests 58. I mean, a lot of shorts. So this one can move nicely at times and the volume on Friday is what kind of got me interested in putting it on my list for today or for Monday I'm sorry um, VGGL couple red days after a really nice move maybe maybe time to move higher again feels a little soon but we'll see it doesn't cost me anything to have it on a chart Novagen um, found some support on Friday closed above its open hit the 20 day want to watch that one for a potential long DGLY, um, you know, a couple days higher here. I, I, I've been putting out my thesis that I think this thing bottomed three days ago, um, but now it's been up for three days, so is it time to start going long now? Um, who knows? You got to watch the news with this one, um, but and you see the volume increasing here too. So um, it's a low float with a lot of shorts and a great story behind it. Um, I hate to keep repeating my thesis, but I'll just keep it real short. I think every police officer in the country is going to be mandated to wear a body camera. Okay, how soon is that? Is it just going to sprinkle in a little at a time, or is there going to be a sudden federal mandate, or is it going to go state by state? But each state that comes out with legislation um, intimating that it's going to be mandatory, um, this I just think uh, this thing's going to be much higher at the end of this year. Um, as far as a day trader though, it's not so much fun. So that's my theory, but I do want to have it on watch every day because news might come out on an intraday basis. I might catch a great trade. And then lastly, SYRX, um, big move here, big move here. A um, couple spikes here that got thwarted. Um, big volume for this stock on Thursday and came back down, closed below its open. Um, pretty narrow range on Friday and closed pretty close to its lows getting close to the eight day um, sitting at the hundred day does have some support in this area let's go to 60s um, yeah it's got some support at that uh, 220 area here what was this low right here yeah right around 220 so um, this one might surprise you and move higher soon um, so I got that one on watch too that's my watch list it's bigger than I'm comfortable with but uh, that's all right we'll find some gappers to play as well um, but keep these on watch I'm, I'm I'm actually pretty optimistic about Monday, even though Friday, the SPY, um, you know, whenever you get a candle, a lot of people were frustrated on Friday on Twitter and really myself and in my chat room because, um, um, because there, you know, there wasn't a lot of movement. But if you look at the SPY, this is the, the daily candle of the SPY that I'm pointing at here, um, pretty much closed where it opened and had a very narrow range and nothing was really following through one way or the other and that and then you look at the the, the spy and you can see you know the spy is very close to um, all-time highs here but that you know that whenever the spy puts in a little candle like this that looks like a little I don't know what you call it a, a little splatter of bird poop on your windshield almost it doesn't look like a candle right um, you know that can be frustrating for day traders um, I expect now that we've had a weekend reset 
and news flow will come in on Monday and all these charts that look pretty good. I expect we'll have plenty of stuff to trade on Monday though, all right? All right, have a great rest of your weekend and we'll talk to you on Monday.